This video is gonna be cool because we're gonna talk about how intermittent fasting impacts the brain. And we're gonna talk about some new 2022 research that came out towards the end of 2022 that teaches us a lot about what could be happening and why we feel like we get this brain benefit with fasting. So I'm gonna divide this video into three stages. First, we're gonna talk about my theory and a theory that I've tried vetting out with multiple industry experts, but we don't have a solid answer, a theory. Then we're gonna move into a rodent model paper, and then we're gonna move into the Frontiers in Neuroendocrinology paper from 2022 that's in rodents and humans. It's a 82 study analysis. Anyhow, let's dive into it. I popped a link down below for 30% off your grocery order through Thrive Market. You've probably seen me talk about them before. They're a sponsor on this channel, but that link gets you 30% off your entire grocery order. So as we head into a period of time where it's just people are pressed for time and it's just difficult to just go and do a bunch of stuff, it's easy to order your groceries online. And with Thrive Market, you can rest assured that the groceries that they have there have been vetted to be better for you options. They're not full of processed garbage. They're not full of sugar. You can sort by different diet type. It puts the control in your hands to choose the foods that work for your lifestyle. So that link down below saves you 30% off, plus you get a $50 free gift when you use that link. So again, that link is only for people that watch my videos. It's a very special link for those that are here watching. So check them out after this vid. First, I'm gonna talk theory. This is purely theory and hypothesis. It doesn't mean anything other than it kind of makes sense. When someone intermittent fasts, a lot of times they'll notice that their blood sugar gets higher. Now, this is a normal thing. It's called peripheral insulin resistance, okay? And what that means is that the cells in the body are getting so accustomed to using fat and utilizing either ketones or fatty acids that they actually spare glucose. They don't need to use glucose. As a matter of fact, as a survival mechanism, they spare glucose for the brain because the brain predominantly runs on glucose. Even if ketones and fats are present, the brain is still a glucose hog. So my theory for a long time has been, does the actual cognitive benefit or increase in brain energy that you feel when you're fasting, does that come from the increase in glucose to the brain? Are you allocating more glucose to the brain so you literally have more brain energy? And are the presence of ketones and the anti-inflammatory effect of fasting, are they just there to buffer the additional oxidative stress that comes from glucose? Because when we burn glucose, it's kind of a messy fuel. It's a great fuel, but it's a messy fuel. So if we're burning more glucose in the brain, one could argue that you have more oxidative stress and more exhaust in your brain. Are ketones and sort of the anti-inflammatory effect of fasting and ketones there to just buffer that additional oxidative stress? Now, it's a question I've asked a lot of people. I've gotten mixed answers, but it does make sense. But that's one thing. That's like while you are fasting. If we look at this rodent model data from a study published in Brain Sciences, it tells us some interesting stuff. So they took a look at rats that they put on a three-month intermittent fasting intervention. Now, what they found with this is that it reduced their insulin resistance. That's not a surprise. That's, we see that in human models all the time, right? But what else was interesting is they actually saw increases in BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, in the actual brain tissue. The reason this is fascinating is because we cannot do this kind of research in humans. You cannot take a living human, make them fast, and take a brain sample while they're living. So with this, we see, yes, it's a rodent model data, so we can only take it so far. But when we back it up with other data that we've seen, which we'll talk about in a second, it makes some sense. So they actually do increase brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So they have more neurons. They have more new neuron formation, new brain cell formation, better synaptic density, overall just communication between the brain cells and the different regions. That's huge. So then we look at the study that was published in Frontiers in Neuroendocrinology in 2022, and it took a look at 82 papers that had to do with intermittent fasting. For one, it found that intermittent fasting does upregulate neuroplasticity. What is neuroplasticity? I don't know if you've ever seen like the Netflix documentary called How to Change Your Brain. It talks about all kinds of interventions ranging from psilocybin all the way down to other things. But anyway, it's kind of interesting because it talks about neuroplasticity a lot, and that's a context that people understand. And neuroplasticity is like, the ability to change your brain. Okay, so think about like th your thought patterns, how you think, how you are. You have these neural pathways that are like little channels of water. And every time you think, it travels down this channel. And that's just your normal neural pathway. That's your habit, that's your go-to default mode. Okay, and as the water runs through that, and as you create more and more and more habits out of that same habit, you just dig that groove deeper. And it's harder and harder to break out of that thought. Neuroplasticity is sort of like being able to get rid of that sort of canyon and make it so that you can form new rivers and new canyons in different directions. 
That is the best way I can describe neuroplasticity. So meditation improves neuroplasticity, but we're seeing fasting does too. But we've also seen that fasting improves the adaptive stress response and increases BDNF expression. So at a genetic level, we're expressing more BDNF. So in rodents, we've seen BDNF in the actual tissue. And in humans, we've seen, the best we can test, is expression, right? So we have seen increases in gene expression and in vitro and rodent model. So with this, we look at 82 studies, we're like, wait a minute, this is pretty cool. Still correlational, so we can't take it 100% to the bank, but based upon anecdotal evidence too, how I feel when I fast, how pretty much literally every person I talk to feels when they fast, except for like two people, it makes sense. So now we're starting to understand that if you're really wanting to change habits, if you're wanting to change your brain, if you're wanting to have positive impact on your mental health, it's not just the presence of ketones from a low carb diet or the presence of ketones from fasting. There's other genetic things that are coming on simply from the absence of food. So with this, it's exciting to really embark on the occasional fast knowing that we're doing something good for our brain. If you need a place to start, I have a lot of different videos on the matter, but I recommend people just start with one or two simple 16 or 18 hour fasts per week and leave it at that for a while until you feel comfortable doing more. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.